Hey folks, this is the Proto School Weekly Call. It's August 8th, and we just have a few updates for you today, and then we can chat about whatever else people want to discuss. Um, so we're really excited on the chapter front. We have a new chapter in Prague, which you can find by visiting the, the chapters page on our website. Um, and a lot of the work we've done this week has been focused on analytics. Something that we want to do is make sure that we're making the right content decisions for the future based on how people are using the website right now. So Diogo and I have been working under the hood with our Countly analytics system to add some more tracking. So um, this is all sort of in a work in progress PR, but we've implemented um, tracking of links clicked from the site. So if you go from one of our lessons out to documentation, we'd be able to see how many, how many times people are clicking to go to see a certain part of the docs or clicking on one of the resources that we recommend at the after lessons. So we can see what people are finding most useful. Um, and then the other piece that we worked on yesterday was getting it set up so that when you pass a lesson, we'll be able to see how many people have passed, for example, the second tutorial in the MFS, um, the second lesson in the MFS tutorial. Um, so seeing you know, how much people are hitting each of these things, if everyone's passing the first six lessons of the blog tutorial and no one's passing the seventh one, that'll be a problem we should address. Um, and the next thing we're gonna do on that front is to look at, um, Look at other things that would be indicators that content might be too hard. So we are hoping to also add some functionality that would say you've passed an entire tutorial. So every, every lesson within the tutorial is passed. We also want to see if we can find a way to track, you know, it took you 10 tries of submitting the code and getting error messages before you landed on the right code, which means we haven't given you enough clues in the lesson itself or hints in the, as we define the exercise. Um, we might also be able to see how many times people are hitting the reset code button. I think some people will lean towards using that reset code button, like knowing they're going astray and using that. And some people will just submit and it won't work and they'll do it again. Um, so stuff like that is kind of next up to find, figure out under the hood how we can do that. And that's all with the aim of helping us create content that works better for people. Um, on the content front, I'm gonna be sitting down with some Filecoin folks tomorrow to think about what we can offer in terms of really kind of concept-based lessons about Filecoin. Um, at this point, I don't think we're envisioning, you know, coding challenges, but with the new multiple choice lesson, type that we showed off on last week's call. Um, that gives us a really nice opportunity to do some, some more text lessons that are a bit more interactive. Um, and then the other things on the content front that we'll be doing next are working on a lesson about working with files in IPFS, not the mutable file system, but the other commands to add stuff. Um, and then also splitting our decentralized data structures tutorial into two portions. So one would be more the like content versus location addressing, and one would be where we dig deeper into like the hashes and the Merkle tree stuff, which kind of just trails off and it's not clear why we're talking about that. So there's some work to do on those and we'll incorporate a lot of the resources from my PFS camp. We're also gonna go back and look at all the stuff that happened at IPFS camp and see where we can insert more stuff in there because people did a great job of coming up with nice ways to explain concepts that we wanna go back and, and put in from a content perspective. So that's, I think from, Diogo couldn't make it today, but that's what the two of us have been working on and kind of have next in the, next in the queue to, to take on. Um, I don't know, Kevin, if you have any questions or anything that you wanted to talk about today. Uh, I, I don't have uh, uh, much questions, but I think there's a, a lot of progress right, uh, updating on the ProSchool, which is really cool. Uh, uh, and and the, I think a lot of content from the IPFS cam uh, can be like, have a really good high potential as a, as a, like the resources for the, as a proto school. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, content as well. Yeah, it's really good. Like, right? yeah, yeah. And also, uh, 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 you remember I mentioned about Jala and Tangy their the book about IPFS. They just published their their book. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. so 
So uh, I I I I think uh, I I just got one of the copy, but I uh, I haven't I haven't uh, have time to get it yet. So uh, I think Masa is doing the Japanese version uh, translation, and hopefully oh, of the book? yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I, 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 and I think if I, I, I think if I have time, I'm trying to do the English tran- translation. Hopefully, Ooh, later. Oh wow! Later on. Cool. Yeah, but I think it will, it will, t- it will take quite a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like like a month or two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so hopefully these those are very uh intensive uh I mean like the content all about IPFS and mostly yeah. about IPFS and a little bit about Falcon and the P2P. So. It can be a, a great resources for for the for, for the public school as well. So that's really cool. Is that yeah. Mandarin that it's? Yeah, yes, uh, simplified Chinese Mandarin. Simplified yeah. Chinese, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, if they have a digital version, I can I can send it to you later. Yeah. So yeah, if you have a like, link, if you yeah, have any yeah. links either to like a digital version people could look at or yeah. where to go to purchase the hard copy, then I'd be happy yeah. to throw them into yeah. the notes. Um, that's yes. really cool. I'm glad they got yeah. that done. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I haven't done much yet uh, in these few weeks because uh, I my baby girl just came early last week. Ooh, congratulations! <laughs> yeah. yeah, so <laughs> I was like so so busy for the week, and then hey. yeah, and then I I'm heading to uh, Berlin uh, next week for the Web Free Summit. Uh, will you be there? Uh-huh. No. Oh, okay. So, so I will be there. Uh, hopefully, I will see Michelle and Joanne. They, they will be there. I think like Colin. I think uh, like they told me that they will have there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I don't have much question here. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Anything else exciting happening in Hong Kong or any of your local uh, chapter? Uh. Uh. Not. Not pretty much, but uh, uh but uh, I, I get some of the other uh, co- uh like blockchain communities people, they mm-hmm. want to uh initiate uh a web free uh web free community in China, mm-hmm. like let's say in China in Asia, like to talk about like uh in more general like including everything, let's say IPFS, Ethereum, Polkadot, like a lot of those. Like, I think it will it will help a lot too, right? Uh, uh, like for like doing the public the 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 education yeah yeah for everyone yeah cool yeah awesome um oh yeah and the other thing that I discovered was that the I think it's the Shanghai chapter yeah a presentation on um, our decentralized data structures tutorial and they created the slides in Mandarin. Yes. So that's something yeah. that I will work on finding a way to share with people in case that's helpful. The yeah. the IPFS camp resources as well, like we have kind of two easy ways to integrate content. One that's great is that within resources at the end of a lesson, we can add something to a list there. You want to learn more about this, go here. Um, yeah. And maybe that would be something that like right now this site doesn't really support translation but it might be that if we were linking to that resource maybe just in the actual text we could include both english and um chinese when we describe the resource um, yeah actually actually uh i got uh i think i met someone uh last time uh when uh, michelle and colin went for a uh, file con the meetup in china mm-hmm. and then someone actually asked me about is there any like chinese translation for the photo school so i think uh it's, it would be good to work on this. Like if I if I have time later, like let's see, I've uh, worked for uh, with uh, I may work with other chapters. See, we get we can work on this later because some of them think that it may be better for them or uh, the developers in China to understand those. Yeah. Yeah. So the challenge we have right now is that the structure of the website itself. So there's yep. there are kind of two separate things. One is if I'm presenting in a room in a live workshop, can I make my slides in yep. Chinese or whatever language? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Um, the other is, can we translate the content of all of the exercises? And the way that the code is built right now is not conducive to doing that. So we're going to have to do a lot of work under the hood. I opened an issue to flag it because there are other people asking if they can contribute translations. I've opened an issue to flag it, but this, this, the structure of the site is still like 
in flux, how things work under the hood. We have a lot of rapid changes to how all of that works. So yep. it doesn't feel like we're settled enough to take yep. the time to invest in building it out, which requires really pulling everything out, making everything strings yep. that you can then translate into all the different languages. So there's yep. a lot of under the hood work that would have to happen before we could use trans effects, for example, to get volunteers to translate the content. So it yep. is something that's on the radar um, yep. that we're leaving there. And if people ask about it, I'm asking them to like watch that issue so that they'll be notified when we have that functionality available. But in the meantime, helping to translate, you know, materials that you could use in sessions, um, you know, pre presentation materials is a great idea. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Just because if we, it is a plain task uh, website, then it would be much easier. But yeah, yeah. there's uh, a lot. Yeah. There's a lot going on. <laughs> a lot too. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah. but yeah, we really appreciate that a couple of people have have made that offer and been interested in going that direction. So it's definitely on the radar. Um, I can add a link. I'll add a link in the meeting notes to the issue that I opened to track yeah. that. If anybody else wants to follow that issue. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah, anything else you wanted to chat about? Oh, not, not, not much. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I think that's it for me. Well, we, I, it, I don't think it's quite worth demoing any of the, um, the tracking stuff where we're at right now, but if anybody missed the meeting last week and wants to catch up, we did demo the new multiple choice lesson format. And one yeah. of the things that I highlighted when we made that update it's, it's actually always been true that you don't really need to know how to code to build a proto school tutorial that's text based. And now you can also, without knowing how to code, just kind of following the pattern and the templates that we give, you can build a lesson that's text based and then has multiple choice exercises. It's pretty easy to build if you're comfortable with Markdown. Um, so that's something that we're highlighting when we, when we talk to people now, just to make it clear. And I'm happy to give people some help one off, but you can find a section on the website about building and that will link you to the instructions. And as we go and add new features, we're adding to the instructions about how you can do that. So um, we're excited to have more people contributing as time goes on and people are feeling ready to contribute some content. Still in English at this point, but um, yeah. but the more, you know, the more we can do to, to build out the initial content, the, the better we'll be when we get ready to translate. So yeah. Anyway, I think that's it for my end. So I will okay. say goodbye and we'll yeah, hopefully we'll see you next see. week. Good luck yeah, with the see you. Very exciting. Yeah, maybe, maybe in Berlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll see if I can uh, 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 make it next week. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. You, you yeah. I'm uh, very busy now. Yeah, with, with <laughs> my baby. <laughs> well, see, maybe the baby will wake you up for the calls at midnight or whatever time it is. Yeah, oh yes, she wake no me time. up like every every three hours now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So okay. I see you. Okay. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye.